All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Monday, September 6th, right? September 6th, 2021. All I know is it's the last day of summer. Tomorrow's back to school. <laughs> so I am your host, Kim Atina, and I am so thankful to have on my show today, Mr. Brian Friedlander. He is another fellow uh, New Jerseyan, actually, from the opposite end of the state. Uh, Brian is a school psychologist with expertise in the area of, of assistive technology, and he is also um, an associate professor at St. Elizabeth University in Morristown. So welcome to the show, Brian. It's great. It's great, it's great to see you. I mean, you know, we, we always run into each other at uh, back in the day in real conferences, So, but it's, it's good to be here tonight and uh, talk about some of the assistive technology that I've been working with for the last uh, couple of years. I've been uh, I was a school psychologist for many years doing, you know, traditional child study team work. And about 20 years ago, I, I left the schools to really pursue my passion, which has been working with students with disabilities and technology. And so I oversee programs at the graduate level in special ed and assistive technology and also teach undergrads as well, courses in special ed and inclusion. And uh, so it's, I'm, you know, excited to share some of the things that um some of the tools and maybe some strategies and hopefully you'll pick up some things that you might find helpful in, in your class, not only yours, but those that are watching tonight. Yeah, that's I'm so happy when you said you were going to uh, showcase some assistive technology in the Chrome browser um, because I could always um, use them as well as all mm -hmm. these other teachers. You know, we all have special students in our class that have yeah. special needs um, and these tools can really be used by anyone, really, not just, you know, specific um, groups. So I'm so glad to have you on. I just find that this type of technology um, is, it doesn't, people aren't aware of how easy accessible it is. No. Uh, some of the tools are built into the Chrome browser. Some of them are built into the Chrome OS. And I don't think people really uh, realize that they're there. So I'm glad to have you on and showcase what you know and share out your many, many years of ex expertise. Thanks. So if it's okay, I'm going to share my screen. Yes, sir. So share screen. And okay. Got it. And get that entire screen. So. So I wanted to start out and uh, I also I put the link um, in the chat for those folks that want to take a look at this. So this is um, this is an, uh, this is a, a Chrome based application. Uh, it's called MindMeister and it's one that I use to teach. And uh, not only is it a great tool um, for students, but it's also a great tool for teachers. Um, in that it allows you to embed um, a tremendous amount of information, whether it be links, images, objects. Um, I, what I, and what I do is I run my classes from MindMeister by embedding this into Google Classroom. And then my students can then, um, you know, download documents, go to websites, things like that. So it's a, it's a great tool. And I'm going to do a little um, sneak peek. This is a show you the latest, latest version. But what I wanted to kind of walk you through today is, you know, tools that I generally use with students with a wide range of abilities and disabilities. So I use word prediction and I'll, I'll show you some instances of using um, CoWriter Universal. I'll also show you WordBank Universal. And then one of the other tools that um, is very effective for students with reading disabilities, text to speech, and I'm going to demonstrate snap and read. And then I'm demonstrating uh, the graphic organizer MindMeister, which is a great tool and a great tool for students for writing, brainstorming, helping them to understand um, concepts. And many of us are familiar with voice typing, which is built into the uh, Chrome um, browser if you're using like Google Docs, but is also available for Word Online if you're a Microsoft 365 uh, user. And then also with a lot of students I work with, um, I use audiobooks from Learning Ally, which are, um, in this case, um, human narrated. And then um, Bookshare, which is uh, basically uses um, text, text to speech as well. And I just want to just kind of 
if I have if I have time, I'll talk about because students are using, um, you know, uh, YouTube videos more and more. I want to show you an interesting application called Video Ant that lets students take notes, um, right? You know, using the YouTube videos, and then another one that uses audio, which is called um, Mike Mike Note. So I'm going to start off with i'm going to actually start off with, you said so many great tools that i never heard of and i'm i'm just good. i'm just you know, trying to get and, that link open on my right. computer and I, you know, I, <laughs> I do use um you know text helps read and write a lot but I, I wanted to show you some things that maybe you know might be helpful for other students and maybe some apps that you may not be aware of so let's just imagine um that the student is i guess seventh eighth grade is reading the call of the wild and they have difficulty with um with reading they maybe have a diagnosis of um dyslexia and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn on snap and read which is a tool that's published by a company called don johnston you'll see that over here we have a new set of tools that opens up into the right pane and then if i click on my text-to-speech tool. The Call of the Wild is a short adventure novel by Jack London, published in 1903 and set in Yukon, Canada, during the 1890s Klondike Gold Rush, when Strong Sled Dog... So you get, so the student can use this um, to help them read the text, and uh, I'm not going to go into, there's lots of options to speed it up, slow it down, things of that sort. And that's a Chrome extension, right? Yeah, it's actually, it's a Chrome app. It does require a subscription, but if you want to try it, the company has like, I think a two week trial and I put the link in my, uh, my mind map. Um, so this is actually the call of the wild. And I just want to, again, we can read, we can have the computer read the text. Old longings, nomadic leap, chafing at customs chain. Again, from its brumal sleep wakens the furine strain so that so the other part too it may be hard to see but you'll see the the number eight over there this is telling me that this is probably about an eighth grade reading level um if a student has trouble with comprehension i'm just going to do this with this short piece of text i can use this tool here that simplifies the vocabulary so when i click on it you will now see that it changed the the word that's there and it simplified it or gave it a synonym. So, so I'm going to click through just to show you. So the first, the word, the original word is nomadic. The next word is instead of nomadic, it put wandering. So now you have the student would probably have a better understanding of what that means. And the third click, which can be really helpful, Kim, and you alluded to the students that you have in your classroom. If you, let's say you had a student that was from France, so now I could put the French word in there, but this supports like over a hundred different languages. So if you had someone that spoke Portuguese, you could have the Portuguese word come up. And the same thing for the word brumal. That's a tough, that's a tough word. But when I click on it, you'll see it says winter related. And then when it reads it, it would read it with that. So again, it simplifies the, you know, the, the more complex uh, words in the passage and the user or the teacher has control as to kind of what percentage of the words get changed using the um, using the algorithm. So this is a really very interesting um, tool that can be used to support um, you know comprehension. Does it translate the passage in a different language or just those specific words? It can also. Let's see. Can I do that here? Um, let's see. There. Yeah, I can actually translate the whole thing over here. You see, okay. You can, I just translated it into French. Okay. But you, can, you can go into the options and do what, you know, translate it into, like I said, over 100 different um, languages. Oh, so that's you, awesome. So if you had a student who was Portuguese, they could see it in Portuguese. If you have a student that was from, you know, Spanish, they could see it in Spanish or Hebrew or Chinese or whatever language they need, which is kind of... Um, Kind of exciting so that's um that's really great so now um let's let's make believe that the um i'm gonna do this i'm gonna open up the pdf reader and i set this up ahead of time but this is just a pdf and they were reading call of the wild and now they have it's time for them 
to take the, um, you know, let's say a test. Um, so this is just a PDF that I found online. Um, and again, um, they could now. What is Buck? A, a dog, half St. Bernard and half Scottish Shepherd. B, a young. Now, we made one, one of the, I guess the, when you look at the modifications or adaptations in a student's IEP for students with reading uh, disabilities or language-based learning disabilities, one of the first accommodations that comes to mind is extra time. And the other would be having a, a teacher or a proctor read the, read the test to them aloud. And that can get rather complex in a school setting. And the other thing that this tool would allow the student to do is to take this test independently. So again, they could have their headset in, they can listen to the question being read as many times as they need, and then they would be able to um, you know, come in here and they can use the, let's say the, um, the highlighter and they could they could highlight the answer so they can do they could take this test and do it independently without having to leave the classroom which if you're in middle school can be devastating for kids especially with learning disabilities um, and especially if you're trying to build self-confidence this is a great way to build their self-confidence by allowing them to be independent when they're doing this so again so we went from you know uh, supporting the reading with text-to-speech, supporting them with um, putting synonyms where some of the more challenging words, and then for testing, we we can support them by providing um, text, you know, text-to-speech. So now, let's say they have to write a report uh, about the call of the wild. So again, I, I and maybe you have. Um, that's strange. Uh, maybe you have, I know you have, you probably have more of an in than I do with Google, but why don't they put like a big microphone somewhere on the tool toolbar? You know, it, it's, it's hidden. And when I show people voice typing, they can't believe it's embedded. That it's there, right? Yeah. Right? It's like, what? And then, you know, and then you click. So um, today we are reading the call of the wild, which takes place in the Yukon period. And I would have to say that of all the features, um, you know, and, and tools that we use for assistive technology, I mean, the, you know, voice, voice typing or speech recognition has come like the longest way in the 30 years that I've been involved in the industry. It's hard to believe that, you know, it probably 15, 20 years ago, I would have to sit with a student with a reading disability using something like Dragon Naturally Speaking, and they would have to read for like over an hour text. And, you know, you can imagine how arduous and challenging that was. I would literally have to be in their ear reading the passages as they said them, as the, as the computer built a profile of their voice. And after an hour and a half, the computer would create this profile and then we'd actually see if it worked and uh, you know 95 percent of the cases it just wouldn't work so out of the box you know using tools like this or even dictate in microsoft word or word online is just uh, you know just uh, unbelievable um it, and, it and you know like there's so many tools that that you know have the same functionality um yes. and every tool i think has improved so much over time and you know, when I say time, I'm talking like within even a year's time, it, it just improved. I didn't remember right. Snap and Read um, a long time ago, and right. I stopped using it because I found something else. And, um, you mm. know, I didn't even know that this even was uh, still around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, I started no, using yeah. a different um, yeah. Chrome extension. But yeah. and you know, I mean, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to do some other things too. And, and it, of course, you can then you know use the um, tool to. Today we are reading the call of the wild woods takes place in the Yukon. So again, uh, another strategy for <laughs> is really for. Um, Another strategy is for students after they write to use the text to speech, um, you know, uh, for editing purposes. Which yeah, and, that, and that's what I was just going to say. Like any any type of um, text to speech always helps the person like revise their work or make modifications so that they can hear what they what they actually typed. You know. Yes, absolutely. So, I have one of those dogs too. Yeah, I know. 
So the next, so just again, I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I'm just going to turn this off, but again, so now work with a student has a lot of, you know, has a lot of difficulty um, with, uh, with spelling. So we're going to, we're going to turn to, we're going to turn to co-writer. So co-writer has been around for a really long time, um, probably about 25 plus years. And it probably has some of the best algorithms for students that spell, um, uh, phonetically, but it also has some really unique features. I just want to point out. Excuse me, one second. So, for for students who um, have very poor spelling skills, I mean, we we have to be cognizant of the fact how frustrating it is for them to write and. And, and it because it stops the process of getting their ideas out and then down either if they're writing or if they're typing and so a program like this can be indispensable um so if i wanted to say type judge you can see i type j-u-d and you can see the word judge is there now if i most of the time, if I'm having encoding problems, uh, I'm generally have decoding problems. So it may be difficult for the student even to read the words in the list. So now if I just take my mouse and, Judy. and hover over it, it will judge. It will read the word aloud. So students who have decoding problems can take advantage. Now, of, is that a Chrome extension too? So this is... Um, yeah, it, it is. It's uh, uh, again by subscription, but it's very it's very powerful. And, and you know, again, the other thing too is you'll notice the numbers next to the words. Now, I also work with students that have motor disabilities like cerebral palsy. So instead of using the mouse, I could just press the five key. Oh, look at that! Okay, the word in. So Judge Miller. You know, huh? Okay, owned. So you're just typing the numbers right now, right? Well, now I can type the numbers here. Oh. Owned Buck. Judge Miller owned Buck. And then we'll read it. In addition, I could also, um, you'll see the microphone. Um, any, I, I can be in the browser and I could use voice typing, but built into here. So if I'm on the web and I'm using this to fill out a, let's say a, um, an employment form, I could use my voice or I can use the word prediction. One of the really powerful features of this particular application Economics. is the, Food. the Food. idea of American Revolutionary War is the concept of topic dictionaries. So if I know I'm writing about the call of the wild, I can actually the call of the wild. So you can see that the call of the wild. Let's see if I can make this bigger can see that I have a topic dictionary and on the fly it's going the to create that for me economics let me just go back here food okay let me change my oh I know what I did there we go. Make us okay. So now what I did is um, I loaded it loaded all the words related to the call of the wild into that topic dictionary. So those words are going to come up um, more frequently in the Buck. list. Buck. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it was a large. Let's see. So you can see large. Large. Now notice I type D and dog is the second in the list. Dog. And lived, let's see, and, and lived in live. I think it's Santa. Santa Monica, I think it was. Santa Monica. California. Uh, I'm just gonna watch this. Let's see if it does it for me. Okay. Now you can see how far afield my typing is, but it still picked up Californians. So, but if I did, if I spelled California, you can see 
I could spell phonetically and it yeah and it picked it up, it picked it up. It picked look at that up. so if a student's writing about ecology um uh, world war ii global warming climate you can load those dictionaries and then those words are going to come they're going to more likely come into the list so basically you have a you can set the base dictionary depending on how old the you know how the age of the student and the grade level and then you can also on top of that add the uh, topic dictionaries. And then it also has algorithms for how recently you used a word. So recent words that you've typed will pop up in the list as well. Again, kind of freeing the student to be not so concerned about, you know, how to spell the word, but getting their ideas down. So this can be a really, um, you know, tremendous tool um, for them. And um, which, which is really, you know, which is great. And I would say, you know, like, 20 years ago when I would introduce students to a tool like this, it was very aberrant because they had no, you know, frame of reference, you know, it was like, it seemed so unusual. Now, you know, pretty much if they use a smartphone an iPad and Android phone, I mean, it, it predicts as you start typing. So it's a, they're a little more comfortable um, using. They see the, it more yeah, often. They I see think. it more often. Yeah. So, um, so, and again, this can be, really customize the size of the text. So if you're working with students that have visual impairments, I can change the, right now it's like a greenish color. I can do black, I can have white text. I can make, I can even make the um, the uh, text in there larger, you know, so if I'm working with visually impaired students. So it's really, uh, you know, a tool that you can really, you know, customize um, quite, you know, quite, e you know, quite easily and use it with a large number of students which is uh, so this this will work within any type of um it's a work tool in the, in the browser right right so in the in the chrome browser um i've even uh, i think i've actually used it here right. so you can see if i was going to um let's say i was going to add a um add a note so if i comment uh this is IIS. This is actually, it, it did work. This is actually a, a new, um, let me see if I can get this. Is. Is. Yeah. It's doing some, some. But it will work like, you know, if the student had to fill out an application on the web, it will work there. It'll work in the browser. It'll work pretty much where you, anywhere you have a text a text-based um, field. Okay. Oh, wow. I, 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 I heard of CoWriter, but I never used it. So this is, this one's new to me. And CoWriter and, will also work on an iPad. Co oh. So if the student is using a Chromebook at school, but has an iPad at home, they just log in with their credentials and then they're, um, they're good too. So the, this, all the, um, the features that you demonstrated is that like the free version or is that a upgraded premium no that's version? that's the full that's the full version but you okay. can if you go so if for example if you um let me just go here if you click if you click on the link in um my map it'll take you to co-writer yours will i'm signed in but yours will say you know you know, uh, sign install, in, install, and then it will walk you through installing. And I think they let you use it for two weeks. But again, it can be really helpful if you're considering a particular student that you have in mind that you think can benefit from it. You can install it on their Chromebook or Mac or Windows um, computer and try it out and see if it really makes um, a difference in terms of their ability. I'm to just, I just have a question. Would sure. you go back to the Google Doc for a second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does and bring up that that little. There you go. So I noticed that it looks like that that font on the notepad what? is in Open Dyslexic. Yes, it is. That's one of the fonts that you can choose. Um, okay, you, you can choose that's the, good. You can choose the font. Um, you can choose the size, and also you can choose how many words. Um, show you display up, up. okay well. yeah so it, it's pretty easy so when you click on the icon and you go to options this is kind of behind the scenes okay and you can you can see i can change the font so you can see 
I can change the um, this open dyslexic. Yeah, and the other um, the other feature too is like you can also um, change how the you know how it reads the text in terms of the text to speech, and then um, in addition. We have the predict ahead, which uh, for some students really benefit from seeing the words populated in that little window pane. But for some kids who are, um, you know, it, where it's, it, you know, basically what they do is they rather than put their own ideas, they just select, I think it's like a, a Chinese menu where they pick. So what you can do is turn predict ahead off. So what happens now, let's see if I do. Um, you notice that nothing shows until I start typing. And what so, is that called? So Should it's called predict ahead. Should now, predict. some kids do well with it. Those kids that have sometimes difficulty with language retrieval, retrieving words, having the list of words can be really helpful. But for other kids who... Um, other kids they may just get a little bit lazy and get in the habit going oh i didn't really mean to say that but there's a word there it fits and so they select it so you can turn that feature on and off which kind of gives me a good segue into a, another tool that um, i found to be helpful and also pretty easy to use and it, it's called word bank universal so this is another one. It basically does that. It creates a word bank on the sort of on the fly. So I didn't I didn't create one. I want to show you. I'm going to create one for the call of the wild. So you can see I could just um, type type it in. It's going to search. I click, and then what it did is it just created a word wall for me, um, based on, by pulling information in in from the in from the web. So and you're it's it's searching by the name of the the novel. What if right, you type right. in something different? It and it it'll still accommodate. Yeah. So like for example, if you were doing something on um, global warming. So it doesn't have to be a title of a book. It can no. be a topic. So here's global warming controversy. So I click on that, and it's going to just build it. So you can wow. see. And now. What I can do is I can go in here and I could read like that's the maximum. Again, maybe you're working with a fourth grader. Um, and I can even make it. I can even reduce the number of words even more. OK, so and the other thing, too, it, it also has um, text to speech. So carbon. So now I got carbon. So if I go in here, let me just drop down. Let me make this a little bigger. So um, I could do climate Climbing. warming. Warming. So you can just click on the word and it puts it right into the doc. Yeah, is making um, the, and then I see the word earth warmer. So uh, again, I can use the text to speech, but this gives me basically a word wall. And, you know, and a lot of students in the elementary school age are very familiar with that. And again, I can customize um, this as well. I can go in, reduce, I can make the layout, I can make it alphabetical. Oh, I like this one. Yeah, this is kind of neat. Um, number of words and then also type of words. So if I just want, you know, nouns, it will just sort. Oop. Wow, what a great tool. This can yeah. be, I'm I'm going to try this. <laughs> yeah, try it. Uh, most of have at least, I think, a two-week trial. Um, it also, I just want to show you. So when I click on here, um, it also, it goes to Wikipedia. It gives me a, a summary. Um, it also will pull out some inf some pertinent information. Um, it also, let's see, what is it going to do there? Maybe nothing. And then it also has some key, key points along a timeline, hashtags and things like that. So again, it has a lot of, um, a lot of information, but I found this to be helpful for students that need some spelling support, but also have, um, issues around, you know, retrieval, um, which, um, so this can be really helpful. And you could see on the fly, a teacher, a power professional, you know, could quickly create a word bank for a student um, who struggles with both ideation as well as, um, as well as spelling. I like that you just said that you can, it, it helps with spelling as well, like, yes. you know, yeah. and then um, it just gives them a variety of yeah. words mm -hmm. in that topic. I, I'm definitely going to try this. Type in computer science. <laughs> Let's see what comes up.
computer science. Let's see. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it it's most likely go, I'm just saying it's probably most likely on a Wikipedia pulling stuff, but I mean yeah. it's for, for students that get stuck or like like again, a lot of kids I deal with, they look at a they look at, you know, they open up Google Docs and they're looking at this blank screen and they don't, you know, they go, What am what am I gonna say? And they look at that, go, Oh, there's some words I can put some sent begin to put at some least it gets them started, yes. right? Yes, it gets them started. Yep, gets them started so or gets um, them past that yep. that hump. And it's very fast. I mean, it's it, you, you saw how fast it is to create something on the fly, you know, for a student. Who That's needs awesome. That, I'd know, like that tool. Yeah. So I'm going to turn that off. Um, so I wanted <coughs> just to show you, uh, this is Video Ant. And um, this is, could be a really um, interesting tool for students that need to take notes around YouTube videos. So I think I, okay, so I, I went and I found a version of the Call of the Wild um, on YouTube. And if I click share, I'm just gonna copy the URL. And then when I go back to Video Ant, I call this a new ant and I just paste the URL and I load it. Okay, and what it does is, uh, okay, so it puts the video over here. And so it says to begin editing, start the video. And then when you're ready, add an annotation, you just click on here. So I'm just gonna hit the play. Let's see if I can move, that. I'm just gonna move the head a little bit. Break it open, boys. So I can just click on that and they are up with the dogs. Now this extension reminds me of video of another. You know, the nice part about this is that it if the student just clicks on here it cues it up to that point when they typed. So they can always go back. Go back you, to it. Nice. And then you can also export the your notes um, from this um, as well. So it's uh, it's a nice little tool, uh, you know, as teachers are, you know, um, you know, for homework assignments, viewing, you know, um, you know, YouTube videos and taking notes, which is kind of. This this tool reminds me of I think it's called I'm looking for it right now I think it's called um, something video notes. There's a couple of them. I had looked at another one. This one is Y Note. That's the one. Yeah, Rocket Note. I think they changed the name. I found this one easier. Some of them are a little. This this one's Rocket. easier. I think this one's it. Rocket Note um, is they give you free for 30 days, but then it's a subscription. This one's free. I think this was developed by one of the universities. Um, so it's it's free, which is- I nice. got to check this one out because- it works, it works well. And um, now it saves everything in the Google Drive. Yeah. So I think what happens is you and you- uh, do, 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 Yes, Veronica, do, it, I think it is free. V Video Ant is free, right, Brian? Yes, it is free, yes. Um, not sign out. Let's see where is that. I forgot where where that was, but you can um, you can export your notes. Oh, I'm sorry. Here it is. You can come over here. You can you can also edit, and you can email profile. Oh, I forgot. I just I just did it. Mm. It'll come to me. In oh, don't second. worry about it. Let's see. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Uh, I just remember the other, the other yeah, there was Y note. It had, it created a folder in drive. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it's, it's something similar. Yeah. I just, let me see if I can just see one second. Where is this? All right. So, oh, four annotations, one person. Uh, let's see. Oh, here, embed and export. So here it is. So I could do the text, and then it um, it here's the. 
Okay. Here's your document. Yeah. So it's probably probably not integrated with Google Drive, but I mean you can copy and paste this in. Yeah, but there's a hard copy of it somewhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, I definitely find that helpful. Def, you know that that's one I'm definitely going to try. Right. Um, with the kids, um, I'm sure that would definitely help if we do go back to remote learning. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, that's that's a good one. And then um, the two remaining are, I'm not going to, I don't have time today, but I just want to take you um, to the site. So Learning Ally is a, is a service by subscription. Many schools subscribe to it and then give accounts to students with reading disabilities. So Learning Ally provides human narrated audio books, um, just like Audible. Um, they're not always professionally read by actors and actresses or, you know, voice talents, um, but it is, um, you know, high quality human narration that, and students can change the, um, the speed in which it's written and students will see text on the screen as it's written. So it is multi, it is multi-sensory. This does require the school or the parent to provide um, documentation that the student has a print disability. Once they have that, then they can utilize the service. And so a print disability is uh, a student that is either visually impaired, um, is dyslexic, or has a reading disability, or a student that has significant motor disabilities that uh, would make it a challenge for them to hold a book or to turn a page. So if, you, if you're working with any of those three groups of students, they would be eligible for this, um, this service. But this is a fee for service, but they do have the, um, there is a, a Chrome-based app. So this runs on Chromebooks, Mac, Windows, iPads, Android, just about any platform that you can um, you know, provide to students. So it's definitely um, a very worthwhile um, service. And the other is um, is Bookshare. So Bookshare provides um, books that which and Bookshare is totally free. It's supported by our tax dollars, and um, but their books are basically in um, text to speech uh, synth synthesized uh, synthesized speech. So uh, let's see if I can, got to find something. Let me see if I can browse. So there's books in here already that you can look for? Yeah, so they, they have books. Um, let me see if I can find something in the public domain. Uh, publisher, books to search. Oh, a free. So this would also require that um, the district or the parents provide Bookshare with um, documentation that you have a print disability. And then once you do, so these, the books that I'm showing are books in the, uh, in the public domain. So um, I can read these, but if I, once to gain access to the full library, you would need to um, have an, you know, an account and then you'd log in and then you can search. And teachers can administer, the, um, you know, uh, the student's kind of library. What's nice about this is the book in in the Chrome browser. You don't need anything else. It just it becomes a reading tool. I mean, the quality is not. So can the teacher, if the school district purchased an, a subscription for it, can yeah. the teacher find the book and yes. send that book to the student? Yeah, so the teacher can actually create classrooms and push books out to um, students. Wow. So let me see if I, let me just get a page with this text. I'm kind of, let's do illustrations, chapter one, let's say chapter two. Okay. So um, this, again, this can be customized. This was set up for someone that was uh, visually impaired, and, and all you would need to do is click UTA, this. The moon had not yet risen above the trees when the Cro-Magnon youth plunged into the wilderness of growing things. As a result, he found his way purely by his. Now I can go in and change the speed, but you are um, you're limited um, by the speech engine that you have in your um, you know in your computer. I, I would have to say it's not the the highest quality. Let me see if I can move this. Oh yeah, I can. Okay. You could hide it. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Let me hide that. There so you let's go. let's see what happens now. So. Oops. 
He turned to the watching men. I am going now, he said quietly. But an instant later, so you can you can go in and customize the uh, the only thing. And this is totally free. So if you have a print disability. You can access the li students can access the library um, and you can provide students with uh, a wide range of, of books, newspapers, journals that are a part of the library. And this is a totally free service. Um, and you can also access this on an iPad um, as as well. So, um, again, if you're looking to support students and, you, you know, your budget is tight, this is a great way to a great way to do it. This is definitely one that I'll be sharing out with people in my uh, school. I, I, it's funny because before the pandemic hit, right? Um, one of the language arts teachers was they were she was asking me questions about, you know, uh, getting books through um, Audible right. and sharing it out, and it was such a hassle through, you know, through the licensing and everything this if i'm going to share this with her and see maybe she can find the books that she reads on here and then have the kids use this yes yeah i yeah. I'm, i'll let you know mm -hmm. um you know th that was like pre-pandemic you know that was going back a while ago so i'm sure she still uh you know needs some kind of tool uh, I, yeah. I don't know if the district purchased anything yeah. since and then, but works, I'll share this out with them. And yeah, this works beautifully, you know, on a on a Chromebook as well as an iPad. Too. iPad, so, yeah. yeah. I know, I know, she's got um, Kindles. That does it work on a Kindle? Uh, probably not. No, because you you would need a you, know, you need a like you know a browser. I mean, Kindle has. I mean, Kindle has the if, depending on the Kindle, you can you know always do Audible, but uh, you would need a, a Chrome browser or browse you know a browser to some type of browser. Okay, yeah. I'll let you know. I'll see. I'll I'll share it out and I'll let you know what you know what the outcome is. <laughs> yeah. So we um. So actually, just a, a little a sneak peek. So this is MindMeister and um. Again, I've been using this for a long since it's been out for close to ten years. Uh, they just got a, a tremendous um, investment, and so you're going to see some really exciting things. But um, most most of us in education were probably aware of Inspiration, which was probably the leading graphic organizer in in its day. And one of the big features is being able to go from the the graphical interface and be able to go to an outline. So I just want to show you that MindMeister now has that capability. Oh wow. That's yeah. cool. So this is a new feature um, that it should be out um, in the not too distant future. And they're adding some other things. But just keep in mind, you know, in terms of as a as a teacher, if you want to be more, you know, kind of visual. I mean, I, I didn't add as much, but you can add icons to this. You can add um, actually embed YouTube videos in here. You can embed documents. So this can be a great, a great way for teachers to basically store and give resources to students without having them have to go out to other places to get that information. And like I said before, for those people, teachers that are using Google Classroom, uh, you can embed this right in the classroom. And uh, what's nice is that as a, as a teacher or a professor, oftentimes, you know, maybe an hour before I want to update something, uh, I can update it on my mind map and then when the students go to see it in classroom it's automatically updated live so it's they always have the, the latest um, edition of it so it's a great it's a really great tool can you um color code in here yeah yeah so okay. you have all kinds of so i come here um i can i can come in here i can change i can do i can fill oh, I can, okay yeah so so this is a actually this is the brand new um, editor. So they're still adding stuff, but yeah, you can customize this. Um, and like I said, you can add attachments. You can add attachment. You can you can link mind maps. Um, but it's a, it's really a great tool. And the other part too, it's collaborative, just like a Google Doc. So you see the invite button. So Kim, if I invited you, we could be both working on a project um, together. Now is this is this free? So um, they, I mean, this is a good question. So they will give you, they will let you try it out and you can, you can basically store three mind maps in your account for free. So what some teachers do, they may use it for a project, um, 
one or two projects. But um, and then once you go from there, then they um, there's a, there's a cost. It's pretty. I mean, it's it's, it's a pretty inexpensive um, app. You know, application uh, if you're you know if you're looking at to use it. You know, in a, in a school scenario. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'll try it out and say, I, I, I remember MindMeister. I remember Kidspiration, Inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, going back like at least 10 years ago, I remember those tools. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it's, um, I mean, it's kind of sad, but Inspiration actually closed the doors. Um, and, um, they're, they're still, they still maintain the Kidspiration, Inspiration, um, name for the iPad. But the actual um, program, which now runs under Windows, was purchased by a company in the UK. So they, for all intents and purposes, they don't have inspiration for Mac and Windows anymore here in the United States. But you can still run it um, in Windows. Um, but they, they actually, inspiration uh, in the UK, it's not here yet, but they're working on a, um, a, a remote desktop application so that you'll be able to run inspiration on a, on a Chromebook or any, any computer. And it works, it works really nicely. I've been testing it out. So. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. I yeah, like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, back in the day when I started teaching, yeah. that was the tool to use. <laughs> I, I could, you know, it's kind of funny. I can remember I was showing inspiration and like, uh, one of the teachers that that was you know sitting uh, in the uh, in the session she she like jumped up and she was full of glee and i said like why are you so excited and what she did is she actually showed me she had like you know a plastic stencil that you know had circles and squares and she was creating her own con you know concept maps with uh, you know a pencil and a and a template you know and when and then when she saw that and then the ability to go from the graphic to the outline, to the she outline. really yeah. got excited. Yeah. And again, this is a great tool for students, you know, who need that support when they're brainstorming and doing, doing writing. So Brian, we have a question yes. from Veronica. She says, is there a cap on how many collaborators, collaborators can work on a mind map? Oh, I'm not, that's a good question. I don't, I, I really, I'd have, I can find out, but I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not I sure. guess Veronica, you're going to have to just test it and try yeah, it. it yeah. And also, I mean, MindMeister also has a, they're releasing, they have a, um, a uh, sort of a, a project management application, and they also are coming out with Meister Note, which is a online note-taking uh, application as well. Awesome. Yep. Well, that's good to know. I'm, I'm glad that you brought these tools to our attention, and um, you're welcome, Veronica. And, um, you know, I appreciate you showcasing them and yeah. demoing them and you know sharing because some of these i really i didn't know i i really like the book share and i like Good. the um the the word wall one yeah 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 i don't know yeah. i forgot what that one was called word yeah, bank it, word bank word, yeah word bank Universal. i like those two a lot yeah. so mm -hmm. but uh this was great brian thank you so much i was re really glad that you took the time this Labor Day weekend to be on and I appreciate it so fun. much. That's this great. was this was great. If anybody has any questions for Brian, um, you can reach out to him on Twitter. Uh, Brian, why don't you give me your Okay. I'm just Twitter. trying to see how I back out of that hot um, screen share. Can you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I took you out. Let me say okay. assist. I know it's assistive tech. Yeah, it is. It is. There you are. I got it. Yeah, so I, I mean, gotcha. So it's at assistive uh, tech. Yep. So if you have any Brian's for a uh, question for Brian, you can reach out to him. There and there's we my are. email as well if you need it. Um, yes, Veronica, you can share that moat offer with teachers in your building. Yep. That's not a problem. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up our show for tonight. What I'm going to do really quick is screen share. So let me get my screen ready here. <laughs> I have so many tabs open. I was <laughs> checking out the tools as you were showing them. So let me sh screen share. Hold on. All right. Can you see my screen? No, I can't. Okay, hold on. I put the wrong one in. Wait a second.
There oh, we go. We okay, go. hold on. Let me share the screen. I hit the wrong button. What? What's it doing? Screen share. All right, here we go. I hit the wrong screen. Can we? Can you see my screen now? I can see your screen now. All right. So you see the sweet talk? Wait a minute. What? Let me get this down here. Now you can see I my see? screen? I do. All right. I had to move my tab. Too many tabs open, Brian. Oh, yeah. I got to get a t-shirt. Too many tabs <laughs> open. <laughs> All right. So if you want to visit my website, it's thesweettalk.com. That's the S-U-I-T-E talk. Dot com and check out my homepage. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, join my Facebook group, follow me on Twitter, uh, subscribe to my podcast on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, and my newsletter as well. The latest episode will be here on the homepage. You can watch the YouTube recording or listen on your favorite podcast. You can also check out... Um, you can also be a guest on my show and fill out the guest inquiry form. Right now, I am scheduling for the winter time. Uh, I will get back to you as soon as I can. You can also uh, be a sponsor if you'd like. Um, sponsors. Hold on. I'm loading the page. Right now, I'm so thankful to have my current sponsors as um, Helperbird, Alice Keeler, uh, Moat, Screencastify, Text Help. Cami, Slides Media, and StreamYard. Uh, I'm so thankful to have them on board and helping me support my mission to pay it forward. You can also check out their websites as well. Um, <clears throat> let me go back to the homepage. And my new book that I co-authored with Alice Keeler, Teaching with Google Jamboard, is available at Amazon. You can check that out. And if you'd like to support my mission to pay it forward, fill out the sponsor form and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And with that being said, I'm back. <laughs> All right. So that concludes our show for tonight. Great. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. I appreciate it. It was great. Bye.